Okay, uh, let me get the chat. All right, got the chat. Let's look at this. So we started learning about moles last week. Um, remember we said that moles are important because they allow us to communicate and understand, uh, really convert between a mass such as grams or milligrams or ounces and molecules. We said our body sees molecules. Reactions occur uh, from an understanding of a ratio between molecules, but we we don't buy or work or research or talk about molecules all the time. We work and, and our culture is used to masses, grams and things like that. So uh, that's why moles are important. And then we looked at how a mole can be a conversion factor. So right here, if you remember, we said, Molar mass is one thing we learned how to calculate. Um, we started by calculating a molecular weight, which is the weight of one molecule, and the unit was AMUs. But then we said if we change the unit to grams, that's how many molecules, uh, or the, the mass of that substance um, in a mole of that substance. So that's a molar mass. And we can use molar mass as a conversion factor between mass, grams, uh, milligrams, kilograms. It's got to be in grams, though. So you'd have to convert if it was milligrams or kilograms, two grams, and then number of moles. And then Avogadro's number, we said, is the number of items in one mole, just the way a dozen is a word that stands for 12 items. A mole is a word that stands for 6.022 times 10 to the 23 items. All right, then we started working a few problems. I think we worked all these first three. We're gonna pick up right here. So you will need a periodic table handy, uh, you will need your calculator handy, and uh, I'm going to be asking lots of questions and have y'all help me calculate answers so that we move, at, we don't lag super slow today. Um, all right, so we're going to just practice calculating and converting between mass and moles. So this first question says, how many moles are in 60 grams of water, all right? Uh, how many moles are in 60 grams of water? So, um, how do we convert between grams and moles? Well, we just said, we scroll up, molar mass. Molar mass is the conversion between mass, grams, and moles. So we need a molar mass for what? Well, what is our substance? Our substance is water. So to calculate the molar mass of water, we need to know what atoms and how many of each atom is involved. So let's zoom in. Water is H2O. And so we're going to calculate, I'm going to abbreviate, the molar mass. So we have hydrogen. We have two of those. Each one, if we look at the periodic table, weighs 1.008. And I'm going to use grams because we're calculating how much is in a mole. Oxygen, we just have one atom. And I use 16.0 grams. Okay. So let's multiply this out and add it up, 2.016 and 16.0. All right, and this is how many grams of water is in one mole. So I'm going to write per mole. That's how many grams is per one mole of water. Okay, now to do this conversion, we're going to start with the number of grams of water given. So we have 60 0 0.0 grams of H2O. We want to convert that to moles. It's a one-step problem here. So we're going to use this conversion factor. We want to cancel grams. So we're going to put grams on bottom. We want moles on top. So it should be 18.016 grams of water for every one mole of water. And then grams cancel. So you'll do 16 divided by, sorry, 6D divided by 18.016. And who wants to give me the answer? At 3.33. Anybody got it? We're at 3.33 moles of water, or moles in water. Anybody? 60 divided by 18. I mean, I can do it. It's just going to take me a second. 
Someone's Can you hear me? Someone's saying it. You're not here. It's three point three three. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe my three point three three. Did you not hear? Okay. Three point three three. Can you hear any of us? Malls. Doctor Everly. Well, I don't think she can hear us. <laughs> So I can't hear y'all. You can't hear us. Can y'all hear each other? Okay. How do I unmute you guys? I can hear the other shit. Okay. So who looks like an idiot? Raise your hand. Um, I don't know how to unmute y'all. I can like ask you to unmute. Is the volume? It was. Okay, now somebody unmute and talk. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can. Lord help me. You yeah. wanna know someone called me earlier? Does this ever happen to you where your phone starts to ring and then it starts to ring really loud on your computer because you're like Bluetooth? So I hit the volume button to mute my computer. Okay, sorry everyone. Thank you, Courtney, for figuring that out. All right, back to the problem. Okay, moving on. Okay, how many grams are in 0.6 moles of iron? I should be able to hear your answers now. Pull the chat up. Um, so we're going to start with moles of iron. So this problem is the exact opposite of the problem before. We went from grams to moles, and now we're going to go from moles to grams, okay? So to do that, we still need a molar mass. However, this time it's really simple because we're not working with a molecule or a compound. We just have an element. So all we need is the molar mass of iron. And how do we get that? We're just going to look at the periodic table. And iron, Fe, we just have one atom here. So what is, what is the number, the atomic weight of iron? 55.85. Okay. And I'm gonna write grams. So that's how many grams of iron is in a mole of iron. We don't have any calculation to do here. So there's a the molar mass. So I'm gonna take 0 0.60 moles of iron. And I'm gonna write, I want moles to cancel this time because the question is how many grams. So I'm gonna say for every one mole, and remember for molar mass, it's this many grams per one mole. So when you write in moles, don't write the 55 with moles. That's the number of grams in a mole. It's always per one mole. I guarantee you somebody on the exam is gonna flip that and say 55.85 moles equals one gram. Don't do that, okay? All right, so we'll cancel out moles and then we'll be left with grams. So 0. 0.6 times 55.85, I remember. Somebody said it. 33.51. 33.51 grams, thank you too. I couldn't see who said that, was that Aubrey? Thank you. Okay, questions on these. I consider these to be somewhat of the simple problems in chapter six. You'll see as we keep working today, things are gonna get a little more complicated, have multiple steps. So you should be confident with problems like this is what I'm trying to say. So check your confidence level if you're kind of feeling lost or like, how did they do this? You might need to send me an email and set up a Zoom time or check with a tutor um, and get a little extra help, okay? Because I, I think you should be able to approach these with a lot of confidence and do them fairly fairly quickly. All right, let's look at this. This is a, somewhat of a different style question, but I still think it's a good one to look at. Um, we'll read it. I have 4.7 grams of magnesium hydroxide. So first off, we need to write this compound out. How do you write magnesium hydroxide? MgOH. MgOH. Anybody think anything different? Well, let's let's check one thing. Supposed to be a subscript. 
Yes, so it needs to be a subscript. Why? Well, let's, let's look at where is Mg on the periodic table? What main group is it in? Two. Main group two. So what charge will it have as a cation? Plus two. Plus two. So if this is a plus two, what charge does OH minus hydroxide have? Negative one. Negative one. So that does not add up. That adds up to positive one. We need a charge neutral compound. So to do that, remember the switch trick? You can say I've got a plus two on my magnesium. That tells me how many OHs, how many hydroxides I need. So it should be MgOH2. Okay. So that's magnesium hydroxide. So it says, how many moles of magnesium hydroxide do I have? So this first thing, with well, this first question, we can answer real easy. We need the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide will convert from grams to moles. So let's do that. So the molar mass of MgOH2. So I have magnesium, I just have one. And on the periodic table, I'm pretty sure, here's a periodic table. Magnesium is 24.305. Oxygen, remember this subscript two means I now have two oxygens. We can't see what you're typing or writing. Lord, help us. Why is it? There it goes. It's working now. Oh, it is? Maybe it's it just glitched. Okay. Well, let me know if something else happens. Okay, 305. And then hydrogen, we have 2 times 1.008. And so we'll have 2.016 grams. So now we add all this up. Just, it's back to where we can't see what you're writing. Well, sometimes when this happens, I Oh, okay, I guess it's lagging because it just showed up now. Yeah, I think it's, it's freezing. freezing. Okay, I have good charge on my computer. I have good charge on my iPad. Let me stop share and reshare. Sometimes that helps it out. Let me know if it's still lagging. Um, so we'll do 24.305 plus 32. So that's 56.305, 57.58. And then 0 0.321, is that right? Is that what y'all got? Yes. yes. Sorry, I, I need to, I forgot to pull the chat back up. I like to have it available so I can see what y'all, if somebody says something on there. Okay, so this is grams per mole for magnesium hydroxide. So now let's do the problem. We'll start with the mass given 4.7 grams of MgOH2. And it's a one-step conversion here. We're gonna plug in the molar mass, 58. I want grams to cancel, so I'm doing the, the number of grams on bottom. For every one mole. So grams of magnesium hydroxide cancel and we will have moles. So 4.7 divided by 58.321. If I remember from this morning, it was like 0.081. Is that what y'all got? Yes. Moles of MgOH. Two. All right. Now that's just one question. There's three questions here. So let's read the next one. Uh, the next one says, how many moles of hydroxide ions do I have and how many moles of magnesium ions? So we know how many moles of magnesium hydroxide. Now we're going to break this thing apart and just look at how many moles of the cation and how many moles of the anion. And what we're about to do, you can apply to any molecule. Okay. You just got to look at the subscripts. So would you agree? I'm going to write a statement really quick. Um, if I have one molecule of MgOH2, then I have uh, one Mg2 plus cation, and I have two OH minus anions. Okay, do you guys agree with that? 
You good with that? Okay. I'm going to change one word slightly in this statement. If I have one mole of MgOH2 molecules, then I have one mole of Mg2 plus cations, and I have two moles of OH minus anions. Did I lose anybody? Y'all good with that? Okay, makes sense. And we're just looking at the subscript here. I have two OH minus anions and I have one magnesium that come together to form this compound. So what the question is saying here is how many moles, if I have 0 0.08 moles of magnesium hydroxide, how many moles of hydroxide do we have? Well, if for every one mole of the molecule, I have two moles of anions, I'm looking down here, it's a one to two ratio. Does that make sense? So how do we convert this? All we do is we take 0 0.081 moles of MgOH2, and we say, okay, for every one mole of that, I'm going to have, I'm trying to write small here, two moles of OH minus. Okay, and this is MgOH2. Because it's a one to two ratio, and I'm looking at the subscripts in my formula. So then you would just multiply 0 0.0181 times two, and you should get uh, 0 0.16. Two, right? Moles of OH minus anions, hydroxide ions. Okay, the other question is how many moles of magnesium ions do we have? If I have 0 0.081 moles of magnesium hydroxide, how many moles of magnesium cations? Well, let's read our statement. If I have one mole of magnesium hydroxide, I only have one mole of magnesium cations. So we don't even have to do any math here. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. If I have one molecule, I have one cation. So I would simply have that also equals 0 0.081 moles of the Mg2 plus cations. Okay, you can do that with any molecule. You just need to see, you need to look at the subscripts, okay, for your cation and your anion, if that makes sense questions there. Can you see my writing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to introduce a new term. And then once I do this, we're actually going to work, get into some more of our uh, complicated problems. So let's read this statement. It says hydrogen reacts with nitrogen to make nitrogen trihydride, which is ammonia. Um, we should have a very healthy respect for ammonia it doesn't smell very good. We don't need to breathe it in. But our country, our, globally, we run on this molecule. It's used in fertilizers. It's used in so many things, energy resources. Um, and here's how you make it. You mix together hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas to, to make ammonia, OK? Um, now, the top one is not balanced, OK? This bottom one down here is balanced. So you can see from looking at these prefixes, if we're going to balance this thing, um, we just need to put a coefficient of 3 in front of hydrogen. We need to put a coefficient of two in front of the ammonia. And then we have six hydrogen atoms on each side. And we have two nitrogen atoms on each side. And we're balanced. Okay. Now, I want to talk about what these coefficients actually mean. Because we're going to develop this term up here, which are called mole ratios. So what do these, what do these coefficients mean? I'm going to read the color-coded statements. What they mean is that this number of moles of hydrogen, three, reacts with this number of moles of nitrogen, one, to yield two moles of ammonia, okay? I want you to think of these like numbers in a good recipe for your ingredients, okay? If you're gonna make chocolate chip cookies or whatever, um, there's a set amount of each ingredient, okay? If it tells you two sticks of butter and a cup of sugar and three cups of flour, that's a set ratio. Those, those are, in a, in a way, kind of what your coefficients are doing here. And if you scale up that uh, recipe, if you decide to make a double batch or a triple batch or a half a batch of cookies, you have to keep that proportion, right? 
you can't just decide to do six cups of flour, double your flour, and then only keep the amount of butter the same. You have to keep everything equal. And that's what these coefficients do for us. They set the ratio. Um, so looking at this, we can write mole ratios for any of the reactants and products and related to one another. So I want us to write a mole ratio for the two reactants that we have, okay? Here's how this looks. I want you to write it as a, fa as a factor, a, a conversion factor with a numerator and a denominator. So if I have three moles, if I put in three moles of hydrogen, then I need to mix that with one mole of nitrogen according to my balanced chemical reaction. This, what we just wrote, is a mole to mole ratio between our two reactants. Now let's write a mole to mole ratio between hydrogen and our product. Oh, sorry hydrogen in our product. It doesn't matter which one you put on top, which one you put on bottom, because you can flip it however you need it in a problem. So if we do it for hydrogen in our product, if I put in three moles of hydrogen, my balanced chemical reaction tells me that I'll produce two moles of NH3, ammonia. This is a mole to mole ratio. It's a three to two mole to mole ratio. This first one between our reactants was a three to one mole to mole ratio. Now let's write one, the only one we have left to write is between nitrogen and our product. That one is for every one mole of nitrogen, I'll get two moles of ammonia. So it's a one to two mole ratio. I want you to get familiar with that kind of language, a one to two or a one to one mole ratio or a two to two mole ratio. Okay, you're just, you're writing these just looking at the coefficients in your balanced chemical reaction. Okay, questions on what we just did and how to write these. Okay, so what these are is they are a relationship and you can convert between moles of substance A and moles of substance B. That's what mole, mole to mole ratio or mole ratios do. They allow you to convert between, if I, if I say I have um, nine moles of hydrogen, I'm going to dump nine moles of hydrogen into this reaction, how many, and I have plenty of nitrogen, how many moles of ammonia would I get? Anybody know? If I have nine moles of hydrogen, how many moles of ammonia would I get? Eighteen. Eighteen. Anybody? Like, a, like, are you supposed to be multiplying? So you said, what did you say? So one if I mole have five? nine moles of this, how many moles of NH3? Oh, you, okay. I thought you said hydrogen, or I mean nitrogen, excuse me. Oh, hydrogen. 15, do y'all think, anybody think anything different? Ashlyn says six. Six, right? So to go from three to nine, we tripled it. And if we did our, if we used our mole to mole ratio here, we could just say for every three moles of hydrogen, I'm gonna get one mole of ammonia. Or sorry, 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 two. Two moles of NH3. I'm literally plugging this into my problem, canceling moles of hydrogen, and nine divided by three is three. Three times two is six. So I would get six moles of NH3. You see how I just plug that in as a conversion factor? I'm sure in your you could even do this in your head. You could say, oh, to get nine, I took three and I'm, I tripled it. So then I need to take my coefficient for ammonia and I tripled it and I get six, okay? So anyways, that's how, you, that's how we're going to use them. All right, this slide right here, uh, I, I think it's one of the most important slides in the lecture. Um, I would definitely have this available for exam two, and here's why. These are diagrams that tell you, they direct you how to work the problem. Here's, here's the thing I hear in chemistry a lot. Um, oh, hold on, before I dig into this, I'm reading the chat, I got a question. On those, does it matter which one you put on top and which one you put on bottom? Yes, it does. Um, Bailey, when I worked this problem right here, I wanted to cancel moles of hydrogen and I wanted to convert to moles of ammonia. So that's why I put hydrogen bottom and ammonia on top. I hope that answers your question. All right. Okay. Uh, going back to this slide. A lot of times in chemistry, I hear that the problems are just so confusing when we get this big word problem. But if you know this kind of stuff, the steps you need to take, 
all the steps are relatively simple and y'all prove uh, on different assignments that you can do the individual steps. Sometimes it's just putting the steps together. And that's why like right here, this diagram over here, it's going to guide you through a three step problem. Okay. It's going to, we're going to walk through it in just a second. So this first diagram, we'll call it diagram one. If I give you a problem on the exam and I say you have X amount of moles of one reactant substance A, we'll call it substance A. And I want to know how many moles of substance B, Here's the chemical reaction for this, these substances. How do you convert between those two? Well, it's what we just did. All you need is a mole ratio, okay? If I give you moles of substance A and I wanna know how many moles of substance B. Well, what if I give you moles of substance A and I say, well, how many grams of, is that? Or how many milli, milligrams is that? How many kilograms is that? Okay, you have this many moles and I wanna know a mass. It's a one-step conversion problem. You, you use diagram two, you use the molar mass, okay? But what if you have a chemical reaction and I say you start out, what if up here, instead of moles, let me erase a little bit. Okay, what if I said we have 100 grams of hydrogen? How many grams of ammonia would you get? How do we do a problem like that? Well, you actually have all the tools in your toolbox, you just got to piece them together. Here's how you do it. You use both. You're going to use mole rate. You're going to use molar masses and a mole ratio. So step number one is you would start with that 100 grams of hydrogen. Okay, we're going to call hydrogen substance A. We got to convert to moles of hydrogen before we can do anything. Okay, so hydrogen is going to be substance A and NH3 ammonia will be our substance B. All right, so how do we go from mass of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen? Easy peasy. We use a molar mass. Y'all know how to do that. Okay, we've done several practice problems already today, converting between mass and moles. Okay, once we have moles of hydrogen, the next step, step two, you're gonna convert to moles of ammonia. Well, we actually just looked at how to do that. You use a mole ratio. Okay, and remember to get your mole ratio, you're just looking at the coefficients in your balanced chemical reaction. Lastly, once you have moles of ammonia, if I want to know, again, I'm asking for how many grams of ammonia. Well, I'm just going to use the molar mass. Oops, molar mass of ammonia to go from moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. Okay. So the rest of today, we're going to practice this style of problem. We'll do a big one in pieces, and then we'll do one that's all together. All right. Okay, so to practice this, um, let's look at this problem. So this is, this is how rust is made. We have iron, we have oxygen. When iron and oxygen react, when you oxidize iron, you get rust, which is known as iron oxide. I'm gonna quiz question right quick. Can anybody tell me the charge on iron right here? Is it a plus one, a plus two, a plus three? How do you figure that out? Plus three. Plus three, plus three, everybody says plus three. Anybody think different? Okay, how do we know? So oxygen here carries what as an anion, always? Two. A minus two, mm -hmm. oxygen is a minus two. And how many do we have? We have three of them. So minus two times three gives us negative six. We know this is a neutral compound, right? This is not an ion. We don't have a charge overall. It's neutral overall. So the only thing that makes it neutral overall is the amount of positive charge. The magnitude is a plus six and that adds up to zero. So our cations are what give us the positive charge. We know we have two of them. Well, what times two, we have two iron cations. What times two is gonna give you plus six? And that's gonna be plus three. Okay, so that is a plus three. All right, good. So let's look at this first question. Um, we have our reaction, it's balanced. So we'll write our mole to mole ratios when the time comes. Um, how many moles of rust, which is the Fe2O3, the iron oxide, iron three oxide, are made from seven moles of iron? So I wanna give you a second. Start with seven moles of iron. How do you go from moles of one thing to moles of the other? Diagram one, you need a mole ratio. So go ahead and write it out. Try to get the answer. Okay. 
All right, so you're gonna start with seven moles of iron. We need a mole ratio. Let's look at our balance chemical reaction. For every, it says for every four moles of iron, we'll get two moles of rest, iron oxide. So I'm gonna plug that in. I wanna cancel moles of iron. So I'm gonna put that one on bottom. Four moles of iron Fe, and I'll get two moles of Fe2O3. So that's what you should have done. Moles of iron cancel. Now you just do seven times two. That's 14, divide 14 by four. What do we get? Is it 3.5? Yes. Okay, boom. All right, let's do the second problem. Any questions on that one? All right, um, so the second one, says how many moles of rust are made from 83 grams of oxygen. So now we're not starting with, we're not just going moles to moles. We've got to take the grams of oxygen, convert to moles of oxygen, and then use a mole to mole ratio to get moles of rest. Okay. So we'll take the grams of ox oxygen, convert to moles of oxygen. How do we go from grams to moles? Anybody know? You have to get the molar. Oh, yes. Now, I'll, I'll remind you, I told you diatomics are important, but it's extremely important here that you remember to calculate the molar mass of oxygen correctly, that it is two oxygen atoms, not just one. A lot of people, if you don't remember this is a diatomic molecule, you would just say, oh, it's 16 grams per mole. But we have two oxygen atoms, so we need to do two times 16. So the molar mass is 32 grams per mole. So the three in front of the oxygen, like, doesn't matter? It like, will when we do the mole to mole ratio. Okay. But now we're converting from mass to moles. And for mole to mole, mole to mole ratio is when you're going from moles to moles. Moles of A to moles of B. But right now we're going from mass of A to moles of A. So start with 83 grams of O2. Now we're going to convert to moles of oxygen. Plug in your molar mass, 32 grams in one mole of oxygen. We're not done though. If we stop here, we only have moles of oxygen. We don't want moles of oxygen. We wanna know how many moles of rest, okay? So that is like, we're back to diagram. We just use diagram two to go from mass of oxygen to moles of oxygen. Now we want to use diagram one and convert from moles of oxygen to moles of rest, so we're going to do the mole to mole ratio. So looking at the balanced chemical equation, if I have three moles of oxygen, I'll get two moles of rest. So we're just going to plug that in. For every three moles of oxygen, two moles of rest. So let's cancel everything that cancel. Grams of oxygen cancels, moles of oxygen cancel, and we'll get moles of iron or sorry, rest. So 83 divided by 32 times two divided by three. 1.73 moles. Okay. 1.73 moles of Fe2O. All right, y'all feel good with that? What we just did is we did, we started with, um, we started with a mass, okay? So we started with the mass of oxygen, we converted to moles of oxygen, and then we converted to moles of ammonia. So we did steps one and two. So we're, we're slowly building. Now we're gonna do a problem where we do steps one, two, and three. Okay, and here it is. So it says, how many grams of rust are made from 146 grams of iron? So this is gonna be all three steps here. So we're gonna start with 146.0 grams of iron. 
And step number one, go up to the diagram, is use the molar mass of substance A, which is iron here, and convert from grams of iron to moles of iron. We're converting from grams of iron to moles of iron using the molar mass. And we wrote it earlier, I think it's up here. There it is, 55.85 grams per mole for iron. So you can plug that in down here. 55.85 grams of iron for every one mole. So we did step one. Step two is we're gonna convert from moles of iron to moles of rest. How do we do that? We need our mole ratio from our balanced reaction. So it's four moles of iron to two moles of rest. I want moles of iron to cancel, so I'm writing that on bottom. So we'll cancel moles of iron. So we did steps one and two. Now the problem says how many grams of rest. So we've got one more step. Right now we have moles of rest. We want grams. So we use the molar mass. We know, uh, I think we need to calculate it here. For every one mole, we need to calculate how many grams are in one mole for rest. So let's do that. Molar mass of rest. So here I have two times 55.85 grams for iron. Oxygen, I got three times 16.0. I'm getting these numbers off the periodic table. Uh, what is 55.85 times two? Is it 110? Is it 111 point what? Seven. Okay, now we add these up, 159.7 grams per mole. And again, you know me, as long as you give me a decimal or two, I'm good. Don't give me whole numbers here because that's just not accurate uh, when you calculate a molar mass. Give me one or two decimals. Okay, so we're going to plug that in where I wrote my question mark. 159.7 grams of iron oxide for every one mole or rest, in other words. So now we see that moles, I guess I could write in Fe2O3. So moles of Fe2O3 cancel, and now you need all the numbers to do your math. You'll do 146 divided by 55.85 times 2 divided by 4 times 159.7. Is it 208.74? Y'all tell me. Anybody? Okay, what was it? 208? Yes. 0.74, yeah. Grams of FeO3. Okay, so that was all three steps. How do you feel? You feel train wrecked? You feel like you got it? Feel like you need to practice some more? Yeah, I definitely need to practice more. Okay, let's practice some more. I got you. I got another practice problem. All right. Um, this one's, this one, it takes a minute, okay? So be patient with yourself on these. Don't work in a hurry because none of the steps are difficult, but it's a lot of steps that you have to piece together. This one is challenging because we're actually going to have to write out the balance chemical equation first before we can even start doing the molar mass stuff and the mole to mole ratios. So it says you need to make 100 grams of calcium oxalate. What the heck is calcium oxalate? Well, we know what calcium is. I put a picture of oxalate here. You need to write a formula for oxalate. How would you do that? I gave you a picture of it, but how would you write the formula? So would it be 
C plus O2 equal, like converts to CO2. So you, you would want to just write it as like a polyatomic ion, essentially. See, it's got a charge of minus two overall. So you just need to ask yourself what atoms are present here and how many of each one? And then just write the formula. Would it just be C2O4? Yep. C2O4 with a minus two charge. That is oxalate. Okay, now we got to put it together with the cation. We have calcium oxalate. What charge does calcium have? Plus two. Okay, so how many of, how many cations, how many anions do we need here? One of each. One of each. So calcium oxalate is CaC2O4. Okay. Now it says you're going to make this. So that's going to be a product. That's going to be one, one of the things we make. Let's read the next sentence. Calcium chloride. What is calcium chloride? Ca. We know it's a plus two. Chlorine is a minus one. You can do the switch trick or do the math you need to do to get a neutral compound. It should be CaCl2. When you mix it with sodium oxalate, so now we're going to pair sodium, and remember oxalate is C2O4. What charge does sodium carry? Sodium is Na. It's a plus one, it's main group one. So if it's a plus one and oxalate was a minus two, we're gonna need two sodiums for every one oxalate. So there is sodium oxalate. All right, so we're mixing calcium chloride and sodium oxalate. So these are our reactants. Let's go ahead and write those as our reactants down here. CaCl2 plus Na2. C2O4. Those react and they give us these products, calcium oxalate and sodium chloride. Well, we already wrote calcium oxalate. And what is sodium chloride? NaCl. NaCl. There's our reaction. Look what you guys just did. This was not easy, okay? This took some thinking. Now we need to balance it. What, what should I do to get this balanced? Put a two in front of the NaCl. Aubrey says put a two in front of NaCl. It's the ugliest two I've ever written. Pretty sure that's it. <laughs> okay, let's check. I've got one calcium here and I've got one calcium here. I've got two chlorines here, two chlorines here, two sodiums, two sodiums, and one oxalate, one oxalate. Okay, we're good. That was it. That was easier than I was thinking it would be. I'm reading all your minds, right? All right, now let's read the questions after that. How many grams of sodium oxalate? Wait, which one's sodium oxalate? Right here. So we're saying how many grams of sodium oxalate and how many grams of calcium chloride, that's right here, do you need? So it gives us the amount of product we're gonna make, at least one of our products. And this is how many grams of reactants did we need to mix together to get those, to get that. So there's two questions here. Each one is its own separate problem. You cannot, you cannot simultaneously convert from grams of calcium oxalate to both of these things. You gotta do one at a time. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, actually I'm just gonna erase all this as well. So let's start with 100 grams of calcium oxalate. What do we need to do first? Convert well, to moles. go ahead. Con convert to moles. 
That's right. If you remember the diagram up here, remember the diagram, it tells you what to do. We have a mass. This is like our 100 grams here of calcium oxalate. So first thing, use the molar mass of calcium oxalate to get moles of calcium oxalate. So we got to calculate a molar mass. I'm going to do that on the side over here. Molar mass of CaC2O4. So we have calcium, we have carbon, and we have oxygen. We have one calcium, we have two carbons, and we have four oxygens. Calcium is 40.078. Oh, two, two, sorry. And 64.0. Okay, anybody want to add that up for us? 40.078, 24.022, and 64. 104, 128. Is it 0.1? Yes. Okay. And um, all right, so now we can plug that in. So we have 128.1 grams of calcium oxalate for every one mole. And I know this takes time and extra space, but I like to write in what substance I'm talking about. Okay. Now, if we notice, grams of calcium oxalate cancel. So we did step one. Now what do we need to do? Mole ratio. Okay, between what? Um, sodium oxalate and um, calcium oxalate. Between sodium oxalate and calcium oxalate. So what is our mole to mole ratio? One to one. One to one. Now let me tell you this, just because it's one to one, Think mathematically, what is that going to do? If I do in my calculator, times one divided by one, that's not going to change anything, right? But do not skip this step. I will, I will mark you off so many points if you skip this step because the units here matter, okay? The units are what matter. We are canceling and changing units. You're not doing nothing. You are changing units, and those are a big deal. So for every one mole of CaC2O4, it is one mole of Na2C2O4, okay? This is important, what I'm, what I'm doing right there. Even though number-wise, the one-to-one -one isn't gonna change anything. Okay, so we've done, we've done step two. Now what's the last thing we need to do? Do the molar mass? Yes, of sodium oxalate, because it says how many grams. So right now we have moles of sodium oxalate, we need grams. So we're gonna plug in. We don't know how many grams yet, but we do know we wanna cancel moles. So for every one mole of Na2C2O4, we're gonna figure out how many grams that is. So let's go do that down here. So we have sodium, we have carbon, we have oxygen. So this part will be the same. This is the oxalate part. The only part that's different is sodium. Sodium is 22.99 and then oxalate is 88.022 so this part is 88.022 and 2 times 23 is 46 so it should be 45 point is that 98 is that right this will be times 1 did I do that right Tell me if I'm wrong. So what do we get? What is 45 and 88, 120, 130? 134.09. Is it 134.09? All right. 
So now we just go write that number of moles in, 134.09. So moles of sodium oxalate cancel, and we have grams. So now we do 100 divided by 128.1 times 1 divided by 1 times 134.09. What y'all get? 104.68. Anybody got something different? No, got the same. Okay. Well, the good news is that one's done. The bad news is that was half the problem, half the problem. Okay, so it also says how many grams of calcium chloride? So we've got to do that part. Let me encourage you though. Everything's going to be the same until you get to the mole ratio, right? And then from then on, it's different. But these first steps, converting from grams of calcium oxalate to moles, is the exact same. So we literally can write this portion of the problem the exact same. I wonder if I can do that. Ho, ho, ho. Should have copied it. I, want, I don't want to move it. Copy. How do I paste? Whatever, I'll just rewrite it. All right, once you get here, now the problem is different. So we're kind of running out of room. Oh, thank you, Sarah. That's how you paste. I'm learning here. I'm actually going to copy. I'm going to move it down here. I just want to try out the paste. Look at that. Okay. So now for every, we need a mole to mole ratio, right? Between calcium oxalate and calcium chloride. Still one to one. Still one to one. So we have canceled out grams of calcium oxalate. We've canceled out moles of calcium oxalate. Last step is we need a molar mass of calcium chloride. So we said calcium is 40.078, and there's just one here. Chlorine, we have two of them, and each one is 35.453. This is grams, so that should be 70.0. Zero six nine zero six. Thank you. So we have one hundred and ten, one hundred and eleven point something. I got one hundred ten point nine eight four. That may be wrong. Oh, okay. You're probably right. I don't have a calculator here. Okay, that is the molar mass of calcium chloride. So our last step every one mole of CaCl2, it is 110.984 grams CaCl2. And moles of calcium chloride have canceled. So you do 100 divided by 128.1 times one divided by one times 110.984.
Anybody got it? 86.58 grams of CaCl2. Maybe. So, anybody disagree? All right, that was a long problem. That was like a daddy shark problem, right? Sorry, I constantly talk in two-year-old terms. That's like my daughter's favorite song. And it's to the point where she will, she'll just start animating any object into the song. So my sister gave her this little wallet. And she was walking around with her wallet going, wallet, shark, doo do. And just anything becomes a shark at her house. Okay, that was the whole problem. Any questions there? How's your brain feel? I can tell from looking. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I'm good. All right, so we got about 10 minutes left. Um, probably not gonna use all 10 minutes. I'm gonna switch over to just a blank piece of paper or a note. So grab just a blank sheet of paper if you have one. And we're just gonna write down, I don't know if you remember when we were getting ready for exam one, I tried to have you guys list like nine or 10 topics that you would predict would be on the exam. So I want you to type in the chat or unmute yourself. Oh, that's from this morning. Don't want y'all to cheat. We're gonna come up with our own list. What do y'all think, but this is covering chapters four, five, and six. What things will be on exam two? What things, this is kind of your study guide for this week. So Dakota says, number one, Lewis structures, and she is right. Anybody got another one? So you need to know the, the rules for drawing out Lewis structures. Um, there's several practice on chemical reactions, okay. I'm gonna say, um, Kanithi, I'm gonna say balancing and classifying. Chemical reactions. And remember, can we name, there's eight that we talked about. There's eight that we talked about. Can we name all eight of those? I'll start off, I'll start us off. We had combination. Single and double displacement. Okay, single displacement. I'll abbreviate double displacement. Combustion. Combustion. Dakota says decomposition. Oxid, is it oxidize or? Redox. Close, Aubrey, redox. Yeah, someone said it in the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you see a redox? There's two more. Uh, acid, acid, acid base. Yeah. Neutralization one. Yeah, we'll just say acid base. Neutralization and one more. Precipitation. You said that. You got it. Okay, and remember, for these, you need to know what to predict these right. There's a table. Charges? Soluble, yeah. Solubility rules. Okay. You'll have that table on your resources page. So I'll have that really, it'll be readily available right there on Blackboard. You'll also have the electronegativity chart and you will have that table for classifying bonds. So what else? Classifying, balancing chemical reactions, forming ions. Morgan, what do you mean? Like the, oh sorry, when we talked about like the ions and everything, it was, I forget what like chapter it was in my notes, but um, kind of like with the, uh, um, let me find it. One sec. <laughs> like polyatomics and stuff. Um, you will need to know some stuff from chapter three about ionic compounds. So like what we just did, writing out calcium oxalate, writing out calcium chloride, that is chapter three. So you don't need to forget it. I'm not going to ask you directly the way I did on exam one to like write the name of this compound, but I will have you write out chemical reactions. So we'll put a little indention here 
and say ionic compounds. If you're weak in that area, go revisit chapter three. That's chapter three, but that's not gonna be the book, that's not gonna be directly on this exam, okay? It'll be indirectly on this exam. Okay, can you said oxidation numbers? Yep. I'm gonna put that with redox reactions. You will need to know how to assign oxidation numbers. Okay, we had a whole, we had like three rules for that. Three or four, I think. Anything else? Think back to chapter four. We're missing a whole lot of stuff from chapter four. Did you write something where that number three is? No, not yet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I wrote up here, oxidation numbers. So chapter four, we talked about polarity. I remember polarity, how to classify polar bonds and polar molecules, or how to identify polar bonds and polar molecules. Remember, if you're, if you're determining whether a molecule is polar or not, you need to look at the shape. You need to say, does this molecule have any lone pairs? And does molecule have any polar bonds? Okay, what else? There was another kind of structure we looked at besides Lewis structures. We had another name for it, it's similar. The VSPR model, it's like VSPR model. That's one thing I'm thinking. Um, yes, that was after we talked about how to draw things out. So geometry, naming the central atom, and, and that we do using the VSEPR, valence shell electron pair repulsion model. Okay, that table we used. Uh, Dakota said binary compounds. Yes, absolutely. Naming binary compounds, okay? Dicarbon tetrahydride, things like that. We had those prefixes, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta. There's one thing I was thinking about from chapter four we haven't named yet. We had Lewis structures and then we talked about another kind of structure. Anybody remember? Somebody knows it. Thank you, Madison. Condensed structures. I'm writing this separate because the way you read these, you write Lewis structures from them, but condensed structures have their own set of rules for how you read them, okay, and then draw it out. So don't forget to review those separately. Okay, what else was in chapter five? We got balancing and classifying chemical reactions. That was pretty good for chapter five. Um, and then chapter six, what all have we covered in chapter six? Yeah, I need help with those. Or reach out if you need help. Shoot me an email. Uh, molar mass, molecular weight. So I'll put seven. We have the whole idea of mole to mass relationships. And underneath that, definitely, we have calculating molecular weight which is the same way we calculate molar mass, but just with different units. These were AMUs, and this is grams per mole. Um, and then mole ratios. And we also have Avogadro's number. So, all right. That's pretty much it. Let's see how y'all did compare this one. I'll come back at, well, I'll let y'all finish writing. And then we'll look and see what they, everything they named from this morning, if we got it all.